Welcome back to Ringworm, everyone. Took off for the night last night. All my batteries were dead, and it's too cold to run the Jackery or recharge anything out here, so I left for like 12 hours, plugged everything in, charged it up. Got back here this morning, right about sunup. It was uh, four degrees, a little chilly. Definitely too cold to uh, get the camera out even now. I think it's up to like 12, so I'm not going to be doing much videoing today. Just stop super briefly to cram some food in and uh, probably get that wall done today. That back wall is looking pretty cool. Maybe I'll shoot a little bit later today. I don't know if it's going to get much warmer. I think it's uh, down in the sing single digits again to tonight and then tomorrow will be warm enough to maybe get the camera back out. But I just wanted to say hi and welcome to lunch. Bye. It's looking pretty rad, huh? Getting there. And the lumber pile's still holding out pretty well. I don't know, maybe I used up half of it or so. Which is totally cool, because this is by far the biggest wall to do. You know, with this extra triangle up here. Plus this is, I think, ten and a half feet wide. And the other walls are, I think this is nine feet. The other, the other wall is nine foot over there. And they've got the window in there. So, might get close going to be a lot of scabbing smaller pieces together but I bet we almost get those two walls. Going to have to mill up some more stuff for uh, the roof clearly and for the battens. Of course I'll save the battens. Uh, the battens on the diagonal side and one of the other sides going to have vertical board and batten. I think over here just because this is a side you really see is this the side that kind of faces where I hang out and work and stuff. So I think it'll look cool. Diagonal board and batten, vertical board and batten. And then uh, you guys saw in the last video, I was working on the front of this too. I saw the first and last cuts of each log when I mill them up with the chainsaw. Get all that stuff left over. So chainsawed off the edges of them and stuck them together. I think it looks pretty cool. It's amazing how much uh, different every single log looks just in the bark itself. These are, I do have a few pine logs, uh, the offcuts, but I try to do, just because it's siding, and as siding, it's gonna be on the outside, uh, try to do just cedar, because it'll last a lot longer. I don't think it'll rot. The bugs don't really get into it. Kind of tempted to throw a couple of uh, pine boards on here, because I have a few of them, just to see what happens. See, I mean, check it in, in the spring or in the summer or something, see if any bugs got into it or I don't know. This whole thing's just just kind of screwing around, see what works, what doesn't work, in case in case next year I wanted to build a bigger, nicer castle for myself out of, of course, of course, <laughs> out of trees from the property built with a chainsaw, because that's the only thing I know how to do anymore. You see the deer are walking right up here. Anytime you cut trees around here. In the winter they can't eat find anything on the ground to eat so you cut a tree down especially the cedar trees they hear the chainsaw and they come walking up through the woods even when the saw's running the tree falls over if you walk away they start eating all the the green stuff off of it all right i'm going to turn the camera off and uh finish this wall up only have a limited number of batteries so uh i won't i won't bore you i won't bore you with all this uh with all this building and chainsaw and stuff i know you guys hate that oh yeah i almost forgot i was going to show you one more thing this uh propane stove that i got this is what's going to go inside here i got it because uh it's super cheap kicks out a lot of heat for the size look how tiny this thing is it's a little bitty guy it's hard to tell from the pictures online how big it was when this box came i assumed it wasn't in here but 
don't know if you can tell what's that like seven inches by 10 inches it's uh just over a foot tall it's got two two burners in it and i guess you can just fire i've never used one of these but i guess you can just fire one of them up which is what i want at night i mean for a couple hours and uh before i go to bed and after i get up in the morning i'll probably crank the thing up and make it nice and warm in there but when i sleep the reason as you guys know the whole reason i'm building this cabin is throughout the entire year i just stay in a tent because that's what i like to do but on nights like last night when it's zero or so it's just i don't sleep quite as well i'm hoping when the temperature gets below 15 or 20 i can just turn one of these burners on like really low and just get the temperature up a little bit for the night and then during the day i'll just shut it off you know because i'm out doing this kind of stuff but man it's going to be after almost two years out here it's going to be uh it'd be pretty sweet to have some nice dry heat I, I don't know this thing as you guys know also it's not going to be it's going to be no insulation in this thing at all and it's going to be most of the year eight nine months out of the year it's just going to be a tool room i'm just still going to stay in a tent but man to have that dry heat for uh a couple months of the year is going to be fantastic all i got to do is get this thing put together and uh make a roof put that on uh build a door and probably about 11 other things and then i can throw the stove in there should be done by tomorrow right Hmm. I think I just uh, figured something out. I guess we won't know for a couple days, but uh, the last two or three days, my sinuses have been all stuffed up. Like, I have no other symptoms. It's just like, just in the bridge of my nose is all it's hard to breathe through. I'm pretty sure it's from not wearing a mask for the last week. Usually, I just wear a respirator when I'm milling. If I'm just cutting stuff, you know, if I was just making cuts with a circular saw or whatever, I wouldn't bother with a mask or cutting down a tree. You're just making one cut for 15 seconds or something, 20 seconds. I don't bother, but uh, I think from ripping the edges off these boards, cedar is not a very good thing to breathe. Cedar dust, I mean, even pine, I think, is not good for you. Uh, I know if you burning cedar or pine, the smoke is actually, I believe it's considered toxic or... Uh, if, I don't know if toxic is, is the right word, but it's not, not good for you to breathe. And the dust from certain species of uh, wood is really, really kind of hard on your lungs and everything. I think I'm getting black lung. It's basically like being a miner, but with a little bit more fresh air. I'm going to keep the respirator on from now on. If nothing else, it keeps my face from freezing. It's kind of nice. I, sometimes I don't even want to take my earmuffs off. If I don't need them for the noise or whatever, I leave them on because it keeps my ears warm. The mask is actually keeping my face pretty toasty. I also found that uh, I keep Visine in my bag all the time because even with the mask on and sometimes wearing glasses and stuff, I still get stuff in my eyes every now and then. And man, getting like a splinter of cedar, not because it's a splinter, but just uh, the oils and the wood getting your eyes and your eye, my eyes just like burn and swell. Even if you get the stuff out of there, it just keeps, it stays bad for hours. Like you can't even open your eye at all or you just feel like an intense burning. So I always keep Visine in my bag and happened to me yesterday, got something in there. It wasn't burning or anything, but I could feel a little bit of sawdust or something. And both my things of Visine are frozen solid. <laughs> so I put them under my armpit and just stood there with my eyes closed until it thawed up enough I could get a couple drops in there. All the challenges of living out here year round. Wow, it is really pretty right now. Super calm, quite cold, and you can see the sun through the tops of the trees. Usually when that happens, it means I got about an hour left, so gotta finish this wall. Yeah! I don't know about you guys, but I think that looks dope. <laughs> Don't you think it looks dope? If you were cool, you'd think it looked dope. It looks kind of like a big, weird, empty wall since I didn't put any uh, doors or windows on this side. I do have one more window that I could eventually later on frame in there if I wanted to. But as this is going to be kind of tool roomy, man cavey kind of thing, I think there's going to be a lot of shelves on the back and a flip down bunk. I just uh probably down low although i don't know this uh the roof is tall enough in this 
I was even thinking I might just start with putting a bunk down on the bottom of it. And then if it gets used, if I don't end up building a bigger cabin uh, this summer, I may move it up, put it up near the roof and put a, a ladder, some kind of a swing up, swing down ladder in there. And then that would give you all the space in the bottom there. I mean, any of these places, it seems small. It's what, 100 square feet ish, which clearly is tiny to live in. But when you're used to, uh, what's the tent, like uh, 40 square feet or something, and you can't stand up, this is plenty big. Plus, you know, you don't have it. There's no kitchen in it. There's just use it to hang out in the morning and evening. So it's plenty big. Anyway, I think that looks great. It is uh, thinking, like I said, this is a test doing all four walls different just to see which one I like the best or which one works out the best or whatever. And since there are a lot of boards that are only like five or six inches wide, that does end up being a lot of battens I need. I probably end up ripping all the scraps down to, I don't know what size you make them, like maybe two inches or something. But that's uh, one, two, three, four. That's over 20 uh, battens on that one wall. Like that's a lot of linear feet of one by two. And it's too kind of too bad. I would consider just leaving it, just caulking all those cracks in and then putting the battens on later. But now I've left the cracks are probably a quarter inch in every one of those boards. So, I mean, they're gonna shrink up another, uh, maybe up to a quarter inch. So that gap could be a half inch. That's not gonna work to caulk. So battens it'll have to be, but uh, they use up a lot of scraps, I guess. Anyway, I need some dinner. See you in the morning. Whew. Morning again. <laughs> it's so cold on mornings like this. Get out of the tent and have to immediately find something to do in order to warm up enough to eat breakfast or I've already made coffee, but that's about it. So I ran down to the uh, gazebo, my, my winter storage. Grabbed my windows. So I start working on these side walls here. And uh, this one, I think I decided vertical board and batten. So I'm gonna put some nailers in here just uh, <laughs> just to keep moving and get warmed up a little bit. I'm gonna mark all the nailers that go across that way, be between each uh, stud. I think I'm gonna do like, I guess just two nailers. Like, yeah, short one, just get maybe something across the middle of it. So till I'm a little bit warmer, I've had some breakfast, I'm gonna shut the camera off and uh, <laughs> keep dancing around, get these things marked out. Well, I just tried to cut some of those nailers with the circular saw, but finally, finally down to that temperature that the batteries don't work. Even a full Ryobi battery will spin the saw, but you put it into the wood and it just dies immediately. And it's kind of bizarre, fully charged battery and I'm not, I'm not even pushing on it, but the thing stops and you could smell like a burning smell, which I'm guessing isn't a good thing. I don't know. I mean, I can't be sure, but anyway, I put a few of the batteries in the foot of my sleeping bag with a few hand warmers. So maybe in an hour or something, they'll be usable. It's going to be warm enough today to use them. It's just you know, the overnight temperatures it takes a while for that big block of uh, whatever it is, lithium to get up to temperature. So I guess I'm going to rip some siding. At least the chainsaws still run when it's cold. You've seen this done, right? That chalk line chainsaw thing. <laughs> uh, if you're paying attention, you sure have. I'll spare you the gory details. Learning on the go here, uh, a couple things I found that I would do differently. For instance, uh, marked out these nailers. Uh, so in order to put this nailer in this board, God, look how iced up these things are. They're a mess. So the nailer's going like that. And then the downside. Now if the way I've done it is I gotta nail through the siding uh, to get to that two by four. So if and when I do this kind of thing again, I'll make sure I put the nailers in. If I'm doing board and batten, I have to do nailers. Put the nailers on first before I side it. The other thing is I already marked these out. I mean, I just randomly set up, put a nailer there and one there. So I kind of broke this wall into three pieces. And since I've already marked them and caught a couple of them, I'm just going to go with it. It'd actually be less work and less waste to put more nailers in. So if the gaps, instead of from here all the way down there, if you did 
a whole bunch of them. Then when you put the siding on, which is, you know, it's all a lot of work to make all this stuff. But this piece of siding goes up to here and doesn't quite make it to that nailer. Then I got to cut it off. You cut it back at the last nailer and go up. So you've got a board. You could potentially have a almost a two foot board there that's basically garbage. I mean, it'll get used for something eventually, but if this wall was any bigger or if I was going to do more walls, I would definitely switch this all out and put more nailers in just to to not end up wasting those board ends. You learn stuff as you go, especially when you don't look anything up. <laughs> We got four of them there ripped up in a good stack. I made these all the same width, which is nice. Of course, like I said before, you lose a little more lumber by not, not going with the taper and the log, just ripping it straight. But at least uh, it'll be a lot easier to put them up this way. It's always some kind of a weird game of how to save the most lumber. It's really kind of enough to make you crazy after a while. Another way I was thinking about to do this is to not rip the sides off of any of the boards unless the log was like super curved or something or it had some weird shape. You could not rip the edges off, just put them on there, but then that means the battens that go over the cracks have to be even wider to cover up the irregular ir irregularities in the boards. Uh, I just checked the bottom of my sleeping bag and those batteries are definitely not warm enough yet, so I... Uh, <laughs> I was trying to think, what could I do to warm those up as fast as possible? I do have this little round heater, so I've got a few batteries uh, baking. Don't you worry, I keep checking them. It's not too hot. This uh, heater's not really that great, but got them up on my battery shelf cooking a little bit. Take that icy chill off of them, they'll probably work. I bet they'd work right now, but I'll give them a couple more minutes. See if it works. See if it'll cut anything. Yep. Perfect. Get some siding on, huh? This is gonna be nice. Now, I'd normally cut the rest of that out with a chainsaw, but look what I got for Christmas. <laughs> Let's try this sucker out. I don't know if it's as fun as a chainsaw, but it uh, sure is a lot easier and makes a nicer cut, doesn't it? Crazy having a having the right tool for the job. Seems like cheating. Just realized I've got to figure out how to put these windows in before I side over the opening. I was just about to put another board up and just cut that opening out, but I'm thinking they probably got to overlap a little bit. I just dodged a bullet big time. 
these uh my dad had these old secondhand windows and uh I brought them here thinking I'd use them for something and threw them in the uh, gazebo down there when everything froze. When I looked at them and measured them, for whatever reason, I should have paid attention, I guess. I assumed these were sideways sliders and it's not, uh, it slides up and down. But luckily the window is close enough to square that it still, still fits in there. You can see sitting on the uh, sill there, it's what, three quarters of an inch there you know half or so there and nothing on top at all so that was really lucky it's actually even better than lucky because it's almost a tight fit i'll have to make some wedges to put in there level it out should be pretty level anyway but that would have sucked i'd have been a little pissed it, i actually think it could probably worst came to worse i think i would just put it in sideways i don't know if it would drain very well it does have weep holes in the side I don't know. Maybe you can put them in sideways. Maybe there is no sideways. Hard to say, but it's got the counterweights or springs or whatever they are, so... When you slide this part of the window up, it stays there. You know, it doesn't just fall back down. So I'm assuming if I put it on its side and slid the w window open, it would just pull itself all the rest of the way. I don't really know that much about windows. That's okay. I think it's going to work all right. So let's see. Yeah, I can see where the screen sets and the drains in the bottom. All right, well, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I meant to do that. That's what I meant to say. Just have to, uh, I guess, make some wedges. I cut some out of a log with a chainsaw or something, or I could even take a uh, piece of that one by a scrap and maybe just rip it down, not rip it down, but take a one by and just take the planer to it over and over until I could get them really tight in there. Yeah, let's try that and see if it works. Stay. I did. Don't worry. I put a nail on the outside very loosely so it wouldn't we out with that breeze. We'll run around to the outside and take it out. <laughs> well, those came out all right. I was uh, planning on being at least that that big a shim in each corner, but uh, it's too cold and I don't have enough batteries as usual to, the planer takes quite a few bats to take a whole block like that all the way down. You know, take a quarter or three eighths of an inch off the whole thing. So I cut them in fours and uh, I think we got some screw, four screw holes in there. So if these blocks were bigger, I wouldn't have to worry about them splitting. I'm assuming they would split if I just drilled through so, such a small one. So anyway, that's what I invented. Don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it, but I bet you it might work. batteries just hang out a little bit longer man this is a lot uh, more something than a chainsaw I don't know more what but something for sure somehow everything makes me hungry like a big bowl of pasta <laughs> half paddle half fork spoon that's what I need is it warm in there can you feel it oh yeah i could tell it's at least a quarter quarter degree warmer in there than out here lucky bastards so i just figured something else out too I said I usually just run the planer over the side of these boards once uh, just to kind of clean it up so that they fit closer together. But with these, the board and batten, I'm leaving that gap so the edges don't matter that much. However, if you don't run the planer over there once and you're using a smallish square, 
I was trying to figure out why a couple of these end butts weren't coming out flush with each other and it's because the edges of these aren't planed. So if you just do them roughly with a chainsaw, you can't square anything, which I suppose over a narrower board doesn't make quite as big a difference. And for what I'm doing, it doesn't matter that much, but uh, something else learned today. Well, I'm just gonna do this little spot underneath the window with some shorter boards, and this is all I've got left is what, five boards there, a little bit longer one there. Kinda hate to chop them all up to put them under there, so. Going through my pile, we're down to nothing here. There looks like there's more milling in my future. I think these, other than this one here, is cedar. Uh, the rest of these, that's a pine. Yeah, these are all pine boards, so I'll probably end up using them. But I'll use up all the cedar first. I just pulled out a couple of rotten and short sticks and stuff, so got this one weird shaped one in half and trying to get as much as I can out of it. It's gonna be kind of cool actually the back wall. I did fat side on one corner down to narrow side and then the next one I switched it fat side down to narrow side. So the battens will look like this all the way across the wall which I think is gonna be kind of cool all wiggly and funky. The sky is rosy so not much light left. Just gonna get these last couple these two little ones and then I got a couple boards like this that are rotten so I might just get might get enough to almost finish under the window and then have to pick this uh pick this back up tomorrow in the sunlight. Using the table like this actually worked out really well with these clamps instead of using the stumps and the log dogs. I kind of like this setup. It's funny I think I'm about it's about at least six inches lower than when I started because of all the <laughs> The sawdust and snow mixed together underneath my feet it keeps getting packed down. This is like, it's like cement right now. I almost wonder if that's not a... Okay, no new building techniques. I'm not making igloos or anything. At least, not yet. Uh-oh, it's happening again. Last one. Check it out, it's like uh, 26 or 27 degrees. Feels like summer. It's crazy how that happens. Well, I'm about out of batteries again. So I'm gonna rip the edge of this off with a chainsaw. And, wow, it's amazing how not straight that wall is. Eh, it's not bad. It's a little bit of weirdness. Oh, I see. It's just, uh, I think when I put this nailer and I punched the wall out a little bit. But hey, we're not gonna tell anyone, right? Right?
Looks sweet. Love it. One more piece of trim up there, and then uh, maybe throw that window in. Oh, there's a bowl zipping around. You don't usually see them out in the middle of the day. I uh, just need a few more uh, eight inch boards here. And somebody came through and cleaned them all up and Huh, I wonder what's in that fire right now. All right, somebody burned my building supplies. I'll find something. Hey, I don't want you guys to worry. I, I uh, found just the right pieces for it. What do you think? Shark's mouth? Shark's mouth window? See? <laughs> Magic, almost. What do you think? Think the window will fit in there? I bet it won't. They're all pretty irregular because I didn't uh, put them up here and then cut them. I cut them as I went. Probably have to do a little persuading. I don't know. Let's see what happens. I'm sure there's probably some good reason to not put this in now without the roof on there. I mean, it's going to get all snowy and icy, but I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter. Ooh, that fits. No way. <laughs> Dude, can't believe it fit that well. That's like unreasonable for all the cuts that I made. Word. This place is starting to look cool. Still a little drafty, little drafty. But the uh, siding looks great. All of them equally. Actually, I think this looks the coolest, really diagonal. But the vertical's cool too. So is the uh, lo faux log front. To be honest, this 100 square feet feels quite roomy. <laughs> I uh, clearly didn't have enough cedar milled up for the other wall, and I guess I'll be doing the this the roof out of uh that aspen so that's another milling project i think i'm just gonna go ahead and screw this uh window in i think i just got like four screw holes one on each corner put my nice little blocks in there oh it's a little loose now i have to do something about that that's how it's supposed to fit screw that guy in might as well leave it there and then uh then i'm off to do some more milling Let's see what we got left here for logs. We got three there, a couple with some rotten cores, and then what do we have here? Two, four, six, seven. Uh, actually, I think these two don't look like cedar. Those might be fir. But anyway, that's plenty enough to do to do one more wall and finish up making battens and whatnot. Unfortunately. As always, this time of year, we're getting towards the end of the day already. Might uh, throw a log on the sawhorses there. I got a, a lot of stuff to clean up from the last three days. Supposed to get a big snowfall uh, tomorrow. So I got lots of stuff, tools and junk and stuff to pick up, finish burning. And then, uh, yeah, I'll get back to milling. Mill up those logs, make the rest of the siding. And I think I'll finish closing it in. I think I'll put the siding on the other side. The other side is going to be... I kind of did these all in order of which side is the most work started with the most work and down to the the least work is this last wall because they're just going to be horizontal boards so it'll be really fast probably take me maybe a day to mill mill the cedars up for the siding say a day to put them on and then i'll we'll head over and mill up that uh aspen and the roof goes on really fast you know there's nothing to cut around no weird cuts to make or anything once the boards are there it just goes on It'll go on in a day. <laughs> I sound like it'll really go that. Yeah, you know, I'll have it all done in three days. I won't, but if you subtract out all the uh, snow and the eating and uh, drying stuff out and all the dark, it'll go really fast. Anyway, whatever. 
it'll get done when it gets done, right? And hopefully I still have all my toes by then. So come back next week, see what we can get done. Thanks for watching.